This week's newsmakers is Stephen Chu, Energy Secretary for the Obama Administration. And here to help with the questioning is Chris Hawley of Energy Daily and Joseph Hebert of the Associated Press. Joe has the first question. Secretary Chu, uh, this week uh, the White House announced that President Obama is going to Copenhagen to try to give a jump start to these negotiations. Given that Congress has yet to act on climate change and there's bitter partisan division, what kind of a specific commitment do you think the president can actually make in terms of greenhouse gas reductions? Well, I think the intent of the president's visit to Copenhagen and uh, followed up by a lot of cabinet uh, presidents in Copenhagen is first to show the United States is very serious uh, about the energy and climate issue, number one. Number two, Copenhagen, as, as uh, Prime Minister Rasmussen has said, is uh, now since... Congress, for example, won't be able to address uh, the energy and climate bill until after Copenhagen, that it's a framework for all countries. I mean, he, let me back up and say, Prime Minister Rasmussen said, proposed that going forward, what can you expect in Copenhagen? You expect going in uh, the establishment of a framework that will say, uh, this is our goal, this is going to be towards uh, a legally binding treaty, we may not, we're not going to get there in Copenhagen, but this is uh, the steps we need to take in order to get there. So the good news is uh, there's a lot of motion going on, and I, quite frankly, uh, am encouraged that uh, a lot of countries uh, are, are beginning to say, uh, considering where we were five years ago and, and beyond, uh, things have been very positive. Mr. Secretary, the, the White House on Wednesday also announced that it will offer a 2020 emissions cut proposal 17 percent below 2005 levels and described this proposal as a provisional proposal essentially contingent on Congress enacting this legislation. What happens if the Congress doesn't enact legislation? Well, I, I um, I'm not sure I remember what they said, there, a specific number. I think they said that they were expecting to propose uh, a, uh, it, it probably, my guess would be a range, but uh, I'm not sure if, um, I don't recall uh, seeing a specific number being discussed in the but, White House. But if there is no legislation, right. are the administrative actions, such as the EPA rulemakings, the CAFE proposal, and other actions such as the efficiency investments in the stimulus bill, are they sufficient, do you think, to reassure our foreign partners that the U.S. is indeed taking firm action? Well, all the things you mentioned are things that we are doing. But in addition to that, we also need to send, we want a comprehensive energy bill. And it, it, the president has made it quite clear, a comprehensive energy bill also includes a cap on carbon and both uh, sh shorter term and long term goals. So, so we are still pushing for those goals. The exact number, I think, is you know up for grabs. You know, we see a range that uh, the House has said uh, seven percent. The uh, the bill that came out of Kerry um, uh, 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 Boxer uh, was twenty percent. You know, it's going to be some range, uh, be, you know, of of something. Um, that's a very important part of it in my mind because that sends a long-term signal. All the things we're doing on the Recovery Act money to promote clean energy, all the things we're doing on the CAFE standards, all those things are part of the complete package. All the things we're doing in energy efficiency and retrofitting. But you also need to send a long-term signal that says to a company, if you're thinking of investing in a power plant, it's a 60-plus year investment. It could be a billion dollars to $10 billion. Uh, that signal of what's going to be happening not only five years and 10 years, but what's going to be happening 20, 30, 40 years will influence deeply those decisions. And so it's that long-term signal that's also very important. Having said that, we're, the administration, the president, has made it quite clear that we have to be sensitive to uh, certain sections of the United States, you have to give time for judgment. You, you can't move to a 
energy efficient, highly energy efficient green economy overnight. It takes time. And so, so, but that long term signal is very important. And quite frankly, there's a lot of capital right now standing on the sidelines wanting to know what's the signal, what is it going to be. And I think once we, uh, Congress says, okay, this is going to be it, and uh, working with the president, um, I think a lot of um, I think a lot of investments will be made. Secretary, you you visited India recently, mm -hmm. and you visited China recently. One of the big criticisms that is heard in Congress among Republicans is that we can't solve the climate issue alone; that we have to have commitments from these countries. What's your sense of, of where China is going, for example, or India is going, in terms of actual reductions in greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels? Well, um, I will agree with this statement that um, uh, this is, if you look at what, for example, in the United States and China, where over 40 percent of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the world today. So we need both the developed countries and the developing countries to say we're all in this together. Of course, nobody expects a developing country to, to decrease their carbon emissions or do things that a developed country has the capability of doing. And so the language in the UN, which is common but differentiated differences, is something the United States subscribes to. Now, if I look at what China is doing, it, it, I see, I've seen a sea change over the last year or two. Uh, I recall there was a release of a report that I had the privilege of co-chairing on how does the world transition to sustainable energy that was uh, sponsored by the Academy, the Inter-Academy Council, which represents the science academies around the world. Um, and I had the pleasure of talking to the Premier of China, Wen Jiabao, about this about two and a half years ago. They were pushing energy efficiency. But there was no direct mention of climate change. We're, we're talking about these issues. Two years later, I go back, uh, have a, another extended conversation with the premier and the vice premier, and I'm hearing something different. That climate change, if we continue business as usual, would be devastating to China and the rest of the world. I said, no, not only are we going to be pushing energy efficiency, we have to diversify our energy supply. We're too dependent on coal. The carbon emission growth uh, in China is unsustainable, and so they have moved very aggressively. They're pushing hard to get 15 percent of their energy renewable. They push hard to close down their least efficient coal plants and are now constructing the most efficient ones. They're pushing hard on energy efficiency. If you look at the things China is doing, it's in the last year, it's incredibly impressive.